In the last video, we talked about the vanishing and exploding gradients of recurrent neural network and suggested some solutions. One of the solutions is to solve the vanishing gradient problem is applying long short-term memory, LSTM network. In these lessons, we'll dive into the details. Let's go ahead and get started. LSTM is a specific type of recurrent neural network and which has a uh, capabilities to learn long-term dependence and also LSTM are explicitly decided to capture these long-term relationship, to, uh, capture these long-term connections and also helps to avoid the vanishing gradient problems that we discussed before. Rather than dealing with the gradient issues directly, they try to modify the architecture of the recurrent neural network to have a better gradient flow property. Uh, all the recurrent neural network has the form of a chain of repeating modules of neural network that is like a chain-like structure. And in standard recurrent neural network, these repeating modules will have a very simple structure, such as a sing, uh, single 10 edge layers in the middle to activate the, 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 the inputs and then to provide the outputs. And LSTM, of course, has also similar chain like structure. However, instead of only a single 10 edge layers in the middle, Right now, they have four interacting layers to improve their trainings, uh, the training process. And here you can see that instead of just a single 10 edge layer, it actually have few more interact, four more interactive layers to make the overall process much more smooth and at the same time it also be able to capture the long term uh, the long term relations between the inputs and then and, and also the outputs lscm have two types of the memory in order for it to capture the long term information as well as the short term informations um, there, for the long term informations we call it cell state and then for the short-term information, we call it hidden state. The cell states is like a convey belt and information is allowed to flow through the entire chain at the upper part uh, without, with, uh, with only small minor linear interactions. As a result, information is easily flowing along it without changing the information at all. On the other hand, the hidden state has much more nonlinear interactions as here you can see in the bottom part. So he ha it has four more interactions, it has much more nonlinear interactions and information is relatively hard to flow along. As a result, information can be kept in short terms rather than long term. And because of the abilities to capture the long-term memory and also short-term memory, this network is so-called long short-term memory new network. After it's capturing the long-term information and also short-term information with the use of cell state and hidden states with respectively, RSTM also have the ability to remove or add information regulated by the structures called the gate. And here you can see there are a number of interactive layers that is actually controlled or regulated by these gate structure. Gates are ways to select the information. They are, they are composed of two parts. One is a sigmoid neural network layers, and the other one is the pointwise multiplications operations. And therefore, if we refer it back to a one, one modular of the long short term memory, you can see here we have our first gate over here. That is the one sigmoid plus the pawnwise multiplications operations. One, one gate over here. We have an other gate over here. And also we have the final gate over here. 
the sigmoid layers output numbers uh, of course between zero and one and that describes how much of each components that should be let through zero means that there's no information is flowing through um, the the to the next layer to the next cell and one means that all information is flowing through so how these rstm work and LSTM have three of the gates to protect and also control the cell states and also hidden states. For the long-term memory, there's a gate to control and protect the information. We call it forget gates layer. The first step in LSTM is to decide what information is needed to forget uh, from the cell state. This decision is made by a sigmoid layer called the forget gates layer. And here you can see that the forget lay layers take in take hidden layers input and also the current input uh, and, the, and output a number between zero and one in the cell state. And then uh, zero, of course, means all information is have to be forget and one means that all information has to be kept and in these times uh, it just decides what kind of information that it has to pass along to this long-term memory and decides so this this gate is to decide what information to discard from the current cell and the second gate, that is the next step, is to decide what in new information is needed to be stored. So in the previous gate, that is to decide what kind of information that has to be forget. And for this time, it decides what kind of new information that has to be stored in the cell state. And this involves two calculations right here. And the first is a sigmoid input, input gates layer decides what kind of values are needed to be updated. And then and tenetry layers create a vectors of new candidates called a GT that could be added to the values updated in the previous step. So combined together, these input gates will decide what values from the input to update the memory state. Combining these two informations, what information has, has been forgotten and what information has been stored, um, it will try to update the state and it will try to update the long-term memory. The old cell state, that is the memory in the previous state, is updated to a new cell state. The old cell state right here is multiplied by the forget gate, the value coming out from the forget gate, um, that is um, based on what is decided to forget. And then scale this to a new candidate, and that is the added to see what kind of information that has to be updated and has already been stored. And of course, um, and by combining all these together, we will update the cell state. And the final step is about the short-term memories. This is the final step to decide what is going to be output uh, in the uh, in the next in the in these layers, and at the same time, what kind of information that it has to pass it over to the to the next step. The new cell states which capture the long-term informations, and the preferred states. Uh, and then the previous states, hidden states, which capture the short term information, and also the current input information are all together combined, and then it will try and then it will try to calculate what kind of information that it has to be output at this current state. And these information or this, this calculation involves two steps. Firstly, a sigmoid is out, is in the output gate is used to describe what information is going to output going to the next state and then the new cell state ct will go through a 10h 10h over here which is used to control the value between negative one and one 
And these cell states will then be multiplied by the outputs of the sigmoids, output case layers, so that we only output the parts that we decided to have for these um, current states. That means for these current states, it will consider the long-term memory. At the same time, it will also consider the short-term memories to decide what to output based on these um, current inputs and also the long-term memory of the cell. A quick summary on that is that LSTM take previous hidden states and also current inputs and then stack them and then multiply it by a weighted matrix W to compute the four different gates that I mentioned uh, before. The first gate is the forget gate, that is the used to, de to determine how much we want to forget in, the, in terms of the long-term memory. And then the second is the, is the input state, that is to use to de determine how much we want to update in terms of the long-term memory. And then we have a gate to combine these forget gate and input gate information together to determine what we wanted to update about our long-term memory about the cell state. And then of course, we also need to take care about the short-term memories. So here we have the output gate, which is used to determine how much we want to reveal to ourselves to the outside or to the outside world at this point. Therefore, in short, the forget gates and input gates are used in the updating their internal state. And then the output gate is the final limiter to determine what the cell actually outputs. And these gates are con and, and also the consistent data flow keep each cell stable and neither exploding or vanishing. So in step one, with the use of forget, forget gate, we can decide what information to discard from the cell. And then in the step two, with the, in, with the use of the input gate, we can decide what value from the input to, the, to update the memory state, to update the long-term memory. And then combining step one and step two, we try to add these gate, two gates together, we can update the cell status. And finally, of course, we need to take care about the short-term memory, so we decide what to output based on the current input and also the long-term memory of the cell. We can combine all of the steps and also the four gates to form a very big matrix to have a better mathematical representations. And these matrix actually summarize the four interacting layers that we have in order for us to capture the short-term memory long-term memory, and also solve the vanishing gradients problems. Finally, a very brief comparison. Unlike a recurrent neural network which has a single hidden state, a LSTM maintains two hidden states at every time step. One, one is the hidden state, which is similar to the recurrent neural network, although they are not the same. And of course, this is uh, about the short-term memory. The other is the cell state that is about the long-term memories. And because of these long-term memory and also the four, four interacting gates, LSTM has the ability to capture the long-term depend to capture the long-term dependence uh, information and also make it better perform on a particular long sequence and time series problems and also a deeper neural network without the vanishing gradients issues and also without losing inf any short long-term information. That's a very brief introduction about the long short-term memories network and hope it helps you to have a better understanding on why and how LSTM is more reliable in a deeper network. In the next lessons, we will build a LSTM network with the use of TensorFlow Keras. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.